Today, I want to share with you a vintage inspired buffet tablescape that you can use throughout the holiday season for Thanksgiving, for Christmas, and for New Year's. I'll take you step by step how I assembled this buffet tablescape. Let's get started. Let me just say that while I recorded this video, I completely messed up the audio, so I'm coming back in for a voiceover. Let's start with the backdrop. We have these two vintage cabinet doors that had missing glass. We replaced that missing glass with chicken wire. And then I found this package of thrift store glass ornaments that I hung in the shape of a Christmas tree. I absolutely love this look. This is a $2 communion table that my husband found at a local auction. He brought it home and asked if I was interested in making it over. And the answer was pretty easy. Yes, yes, and yes. I used milk paint, I created a chippy paint finish, and I'll link to the blog post with all the instructions for this table. This tablecloth was given to me by my mother and I've had it for about 40 years. She had had it for at least 30 years prior. So it's a very old tablecloth. It's all lace and it's pretty large. And I wanna use that in this vintage inspired buffet tablescape, but I wanna use it in a non-traditional kind of way. You can see that I have gathered it all up and I'm just spreading it out across the table, kind of in a little S curve. All I did was I gathered it in my hands to create one long piece. What I wanted to avoid was hanging, using this tablecloth in a traditional way like you see me do there. So I just gathered it up and I just meandered it across the top of the table. I really like that this adds a uh, casual look to the table setting, and it adds some dimension and texture as well. Next, let's layer in some home decor pieces. This is a finial that I found at my local thrift store for about two or three dollars. It was a very dull gold and I gave it a quick makeover. I'll insert a little video of how I made this over. But I used gold gilding wax and glass glitter to add a festive look to this very inexpensive home decor piece. I'm going to use this piece on the back corner of our buffet table, but when I set it down, I realized that it was going to be too low once I have the serving dishes in front of it. So I grabbed this false craft Yorktown pattern crock and I turned it upside down and then I turned the design to the back. And once I place that finial on top, it raises up that finial just enough and it just looks like another layer of design on the buffet tablescape. To give balance to this buffet table, I chose three brass candlesticks and I put them on the other side. I like to decorate in odd numbers and three is a really good number to use. And I also used varying heights of the brass candlesticks. You're going to notice they do not match and I love that. I also put my candle snuffer beside the candlesticks so that I can put these candles out safely. But honestly, I think I'm going to replace these with battery powered candles. The floral arrangement is pretty unique. This was a dozen white roses that one of my son-in-laws gave to me for my birthday back in May. I gathered them up in a bunch when I was finished enjoying them after a week or so, and then I hung them upside down in my dining room and I just let them air dry. They dried perfectly. I used those long stem roses in this beautiful ironstone sugar bowl with the gold detail, but first I put in this pick from Hobby Lobby 
that was just a generic kind of pick and then I stuck the roses in there. The pick is actually holding up the roses perfectly. So once again, I had that sugar bowl back there. It was not quite high enough once I had all the food plates in front. So I decided to use another smaller crock from my false craft collection to raise it up just a little bit. And I think that this whole thing looks very balanced and now we're ready to just add the serving dishes. Now let's talk about the serving dishes that we're going to use. Most of the pieces that I have are ironstone. Well, actually, I think all of the pieces are ironstone. I've taken a couple of platters and I've stacked them on top of each other, and I'm only going to use the top one for the meat. We usually have turkey or ham, and that'll be really lovely. But again, you can see that it's a little low on the table, so I want to raise it up. I use this wood slice riser that we made with these little feet. I'll link to these little feet. You can add them to any chunk of wood that you need to and make your own riser. And then I white waxed it just to lighten the color. It was pretty dark and the white wax just gave it a really nice look. The next step was just to place the platters right on top of that riser and it brings up that, that serving dish perfectly. Here's a fun way to serve gravy. I have this vintage fondue pot. This is a wonderful little piece and I thought it would be just perfect for gravy. Now you notice that I did polish the top piece of this fondue set and the base of it I have not polished yet. I like the look of polished silver and I also like the look of unpolished silver. I don't know which I like best and I kind of like the combination of the two of these pieces. You'll also see that I have a silver ladle. I need to give that a nice polishing and that'll be perfect to serve the gravy. I love to collect antique ironstone soup tureens and especially ones that are this pretty. This has a beautiful crazing. It has a lovely scallop design. The handles are, are just gorgeous and even the lid has just such pretty detail to it. This soup tureen is a little deeper than the other ones that I have so I've decided to use this for the mashed potatoes. I'm going to put it close to the meat platter and the gravy platter because at my house, we put meat on the plate and then we put mashed potatoes and then we like to put gravy over all of that. For the vegetable, I'm going to use another soup tureen, but I'm going to do something a little different. I'm going to use two soup tureens. The one on the bottom is going to rise up the one on the top. And in order to do that, I crumpled up some brown craft paper and I put it in the one that I would use on the bottom. Then I took this antique crochet doily that has a huge hole in it and I just bunched it all up on the inside so that the edges would just fall out just a little bit. Now you see that big hole. I'm going to turn that around to the back and no one will ever even notice that it's there. Once I have this all bunched up, I take the other soup tureen and I put it on the top. And again, that will make this higher up in the back so that it can still be accessed and seen from the, from the front of the table when the guests are getting their food. I'm really loving the layered look of this and I think that the crochet doily just adds a whole other layer of texture to this whole table setting. I like to offer a pitcher of ice water with the meal. A lot of people just want water to drink. And in order to do that, I wanted to use a dish that would also catch the moisture. So I grabbed this round iron stone bowl. It's very shallow, beautiful crazing, loving the color. I added another small crocheted doily to the bottom of it. And then I placed it where I thought the end of the table would be so that people could get water. And then I grabbed this 
beautiful silver water pitcher. I just love this. I have not polished it. I'm still deciding whether to leave it this color. I love the color and how it looks so beautiful together with all the ironstone. Here's an option if you don't want to have your serving utensils inside the dish of the food that you're serving. You can have a smaller ironstone plate with a beautiful silver serving utensil near the dish that has that food item. You can do either, either or. I'm going to give you another option here in just a little bit of how to do this. This is the fork that I'll use for the vegetable, and then I'll have another plate very similar for the dish near the mashed potatoes. Here's the dish that I'm going to use to serve butter. I don't know that this is officially a butter dish, but I'm gonna use that for today. And I have another idea for this as well. But you'll notice on the inside of this dish that there are divisions. So if you know what kind of dish this is, please let me know down in the comments. I had heard that it could be used for artists' paintbrushes because it would the paintbrush could rest on those little ridges and dry when it's not being used and then have a lid to protect it. You could also use this to serve little appetizers like olives and sweet gherkins at the table. Here I wanted to add a gilded fruit decor piece. I bought these pears on Amazon. They came in a very strange orangey yellowish kind of color and I used gold and silver gilding wax and made these beautiful gilded pears. I just love the look of these. If you need more space on your buffet table, you can completely eliminate the serving spoon plates that I have here. So just put the serving utensil in the dish where you're going to serve the food, remove that plate, and make a couple of adjustments, and you can fit a couple of more of these soup terrines right on the buffet table for however many food items that you need to present. And by the way, I said that I'd be using this dish as the butter dish there on the left. The rolls or the bread would be on the table because, well, you just can't have enough bread or rolls during a holiday meal, can you?
I hope that you are inspired to create your own vintage style tablescape for your home. If you are, let me know down in the comments. And I don't know, maybe you have different dishes than I do and you don't have a collection of ironstone and you have some other collection. Let me know about that down in the comments. I wanna hear about it. If you enjoyed this video, I sure would appreciate it if you would click on subscribe and give us a thumbs up. It really does help us. From my home to yours, I'm wishing you a very Merry Christmas and a happy holiday season as you enjoy time with friends and family. We'll see you next time. Thank mm -hmm. you.